If you use QuickBooks Online, you're probably aware that it doesn't have a way to subtotal numeric columns. In this video, we're going to look at how you can use a program called Full Speed to do just that. In this case, we'll show how to subtotal the quantity column. We could subtotal the amount column just as easily, but for this example, we'll do both subtotals and a grand total for items in the quantity column. Here's an example QuickBooks Online invoice with a few items entered. Let's say that we'd like to have separate subtotals for the flower pots and for the bedding plants. Before we set up full speed, let's think about what the invoice needs to have a place to show the calculated subtotals. We need to put a blank line below the flower pot rows and to have another blank line below the bedding plants rows. Here's a blank subtotal line for the flower pot rows and here's a blank subtotal line for the bedding plants. Now, in order to tell full speed where to calculate subtotals, we need to have some product service item names that will trigger the calculations. I've set up some of those in the products and services list. Here you can see the first one called subtotal. It has a price of zero and the account doesn't matter because this item won't be used for recording any income or expense. One of the other things we'll want to do with it in this example is a grand total and so we've also set up another item called total quantity and we'll use it to trigger the calculation of a total. It's set up the same way, the price is zero, the account doesn't matter. Back to the invoice, let's enter those items in the appropriate slots. There, now we have the items in place. We've got two subtotal items and we have a total quantity item. We can use those to trigger full speed to do the calculations we want. Now let's go over to full speed and set up the calculations. When you first see the full speed main window, you probably think that it looks pretty busy. Well, that's because it's basically a spreadsheet on the order of Microsoft Excel. And in fact, it supports a lot of Excel formulas and functions. But the truth of the matter is that you rarely have to use all of the options that are available. In fact, setting up subtotals is pretty simple. Before we actually get started defining formulas, something that's optional but a good idea to do is to enter the names of the columns we'll be working with so that we have a reminder of where our formulas need to go. So I'll go up here to the column and field names row and enter the invoice column names or something similar. The first one is the products and services column, then there's a description column, then quantity, rate, amount, and tax. Again, these are optional, but it helps us keep our bearings. This row is the formulas row. Its purpose is for calculations on every row of the invoice. We don't have any of those, so we can ignore it. What we need are text triggered formulas, that is formulas which spring into action when certain text is encountered on the invoice. There are five rows available for text triggered formulas and we only need two of them. The first one of those is subtotal. So whenever full speed sees subtotal in the products or services column, it knows to apply the formula that we will define here on this line. Full speed only tries to match text in one column on the invoice and we have to tell it which column that is. So I'll click here again in the products and services column and click the blue M button which means the match column and that's telling us that full speed will look in this column of the invoice for text matches. Now let's set up the formula. Again we want to subtotal the quantity column so we use a sum formula if you're familiar with Microsoft Excel and if you're not, you can just do exactly as I do and you can set up these formulas the same way. This formula says to sum the range of cells from E0 to E0. Well, we're in column E, but why zero? There is no row zero. This is a shorthand way to tell full speed to sum the entire column. That is, all of the available rows on the invoice. Now we also need to set up a text triggered formula for the total quantity item. In this case the formula is exactly the same as for the subtotal.
I won't go into detail about why the two formulas are identical. Just know that each one separately keeps track of the rows that it has totaled so far. And in the case of the total quantity item, since it's only going to be seen once on the invoice, it will sum all of the data rows on the invoice. Before we can use this macro over in QuickBooks Online, we have a couple more little chores to do. There's a description field at the top. This is optional, but we can enter text there to remind us of the purpose of this macro. Something that is required is to identify the target application we're working with, in this case QuickBooks Online. The next item is the repeat type. Don't worry too much about it. Just know that the one we've selected here is telling full speed to process all of the lines on the invoice. This orange button tells us what hotkey is assigned to this macro. It has been set to shift control 2. You can use any hotkey you want. We could have assigned F11 or F10 or something else. The important thing is not to assign a hotkey that's used by the web browser where QuickBooks Online is being run. There's one last thing that we're required to do. Full speed needs to know where, that is in which column, the macro is being run from. Let's say that we'll always click in the quantity column of the invoice before we press the hotkey. Now we click the green B button, which stands for Begin Field. That's telling full speed that this is where the macro always needs to begin when we invoke it or run it. Finally, let's save the full speed file so that we know our changes will be preserved. It's important to know that this macro can be used any number of times from QuickBooks Online without doing this setup ever again. Notice too the tabs at the bottom edge of the full speed window numbered 0 through 9. You can have up to 10 different macros defined within full speed at one time. Each can have a different hotkey and so you can have a lot of different calculations ready to use at a moment's notice by pressing the appropriate hotkey while you're working in QuickBooks Online or any of the other programs that Full Speed supports. Let's go back to the invoice and try out the macro. Remember that we set the quantity column as the begin field, so we have to click in the quantity column on the first data row before we run the macro. Now I'll press that macro's hotkey with shift control 2 and we'll let it run. Full speed subtotaled the flower pot quantities. It also subtotaled the quantity for the two rows of bedding plants. And here on the total quantity row, we have a total for all of the items on the invoice. So how would you use a macro like this day to day? Well, you'd start up full speed anytime you were going to be working in QuickBooks Online. You would enter invoices normally, inserting the subtotal item or the total quantity item wherever you wanted subtotals and totals. And when done filling in the invoice, you click on the first row in the quantity column, then press the macros hotkey to do the calculations. When that's been done, all that's left to do is to save the invoice or email or print it, because everything that full speed calculates is written directly back onto the invoice as a permanent part of the invoice's data. If you want to know more about full speed, you can search for other videos on YouTube or go to our company's website, goflagship.com where you'll find a lot of product detail and detailed setup examples. Thank you.